Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to be answering question number 11 from the June 2018 GCE 9MA01 paper. This is the paper one of the A level from the UK from Edexcel. And this corresponds, this question corresponds to binomial expansion that we have in P4 in international A level. Um, so we're asked to use binomial expansions to show that the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x approximates to 1 plus 5 over 2x minus 5 over 8x squared. So again, it's one of those show that questions, which means we have to be very clear in our steps. Be very clear in showing our steps because they've told us the answer. So we have to show in our steps how to get the answer in a very clear way in order to gain all the marks for the question. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as separate um, square roots and in index form. So I'll write this as 1 plus 4x to the power of a half divided by 1 minus x to the power of a half, which I can write as a product, which will be easy for, easy for me to deal with. So I'll write this as 1 plus 4x to the power of a half multiplied by, and this will be like 1 minus x to the power of negative a half, using the fact that 1 over a to the power of n is the same as a to the power of negative n. It's reciprocal, right? So now, if I expand this up to the term in x squared, and I expand this up to the term in x squared, then I should get the answer required after I multiply them together. So I'm going to do this for each of those separately. So I'll start with 1 plus 4x to the power of a half. I'm going to expand this, and I'm going to use the formula in the formula sheet, which you don't need to really, um, you know, uh, I mean, look at the formula sheets once you know how it works. It's very easy. This is like how it looks in the formula sheet, something like this, 1 plus x to the power of n, and the x just stands for whatever's in this position, including the sign. So the formula sheet will say 1 plus n times x and then plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared, plus, and it continues on like that, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial times x cubed. We only have to worry up to going to the, the squared term. So how do I apply it to this question here? First, we have to make sure it says 1 plus, and both of them have 1. Well, it could be minus 1, no problem, but there must be a 1 in this position here, and there is in both of them. So for this, there's no problem. We don't have to do any adjustment to that. Okay, you'll see some other questions in the playlist for this topic where we've had to adjust when the number's not one there. and can have a look and see what we have to do in those cases. In this case, we're fine. We don't have to do any adjustment to this. We can apply the formula straight away because it's got one here. Now, so you're going to have one plus n. Now, n is the power, so that's a half in this case, times x. Now, x is whatever's in this position, including the sign. So here it's plus 4x, so we can just write 4x here. Okay, plus n times n minus 1, so it's a half times, now a half minus 1 is negative a half, over 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, times x squared. So it's going to be, this 4x is going to be squared. Plus, now I don't need to go any further than that because we can we only need to expand up to x squared, and so that, that will help us get the final answer in the end. So this gives us, 1 plus, this is a half of 4x, which is 2x. And I have, um, this will be positive times negative. So this is going to give us a negative term. All right, you're going to have a, a half times a half divided by a half, which is going to be um, 1 over 8. And this is going to give me 16x squared. So 1 over 8 times 16x squared. We haven't quite finished yet. We just simplify that. That will also give me a 2, won't it? So that will be 1 plus 2x minus 2x squared. Okay, so that's up to um, the x squared term. So 1 plus 4x to the power of a half will give us this. Now, I'm going to also do the same thing now for 1 minus x to the power of negative a half. So I'm going to expand that as well. So I'll have 1 minus x to the power of negative a half, and that's equal to... So again, we're going to use the same formula, 1 plus nx. So 1 plus n, and this time n is minus a half, and our x is minus x, okay, in the formula. 
So that's the minus x, including the sign, remember? So it's 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1. So it's minus a half times. Now minus a half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2. Over 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1 times. And then this, this term squared. Okay, so that's as far as we need to go. So let's just simplify this. So you have 1. And this is going to give me plus a half of x. And here you're going to have a minus times a minus, which is plus, and that minus is squared, so it's going to be a positive term. You have 3 over 8, and that's going to be x squared. Okay, because you have a half and 3 over 2 um, divided by 2, that's going to be 3 over 8, x squared. And that's as far as we need to go. So that's 1 minus x to the power of negative a half. So therefore, we can say that the square root of um, 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x is equal to the product of these two. So there's a product of these two things here. So you're going to have uh, 1 plus 2x minus 2x squared times 1 plus a half x plus 3 over 8x squared. Okay, so now when we expand this, we should get the answer the same as that. Okay, so we only have to worry about the x squared term. So for the first one, we have 1 times 1, okay, which is 1, and 1 times a half x, which is a half x, and 1 times 3 over 8x squared, which is 3 over 8x squared. So I've multiplied by the first term. Now I'm going to multiply by the second term. So 2x times 1, that's 2x. 2x times a half x, which is plus 1x. And then 2x times 3 over 8, well, um, we don't have to, uh, sorry, that's going to be half x squared, that's going to be x squared, sorry about that. 2x times 1 is 2x, 2x times a half x is uh, x squared. Now, when I multiply 2x by 3 over 8 x squared, I'm going to get x cubed term. As it says, we only want, of course, up to x squared, we don't need x cubed terms, I'm going to ignore the x cubed term. All right, and I'm going to go straight for multiplying by this negative 2x squared. So negative 2x squared times 1 is negative 2x squared. And the rest of the terms will be cubed to the power 4, which I don't need. Okay, I don't need the other terms. So I can stop there. So let me just make sure that this is written clearly. Okay, plus, da -da, and you've got minus 2x, cubed, uh, 2x squared, and I don't need any of the other terms. All right, those are the only terms that I need, okay, for this expansion, because I only need the what terms in the constant, the x, and the x squared terms. So for the constants, it's 1. For the x terms, we've got a half x plus 2x. That's 1 over 2 plus 4 over 2. That's plus 5 over 2x. And for the x squared terms, we've got 3, 8, 3 over 8x squared minus 1x squared. That's going to give me minus 5 over 8x squared. It's 3 over 8 minus 1. Okay. That's going to be minus 5 over 8x squared. All right, so there's the answer to this question. And let's see if it's correct. Yes, it is. 1 plus 5 over 2x minus 5 over 8x squared. And that's exactly what we've shown. Okay, and that is how we answer this question uh, for part 11, part A. Now we're going to move on to 11, part B. Right, it says, a student substitutes x equals a half into both sides of the approximation shown in part A. So, this approximation. In an attempt to find an approximation to root 6, give a reason why the student should not choose or should not use x equals a half. And the reason is as follows. That 1 plus 4x to the power of a half, okay, this is valid as long as the modulus of 4x is less than 1. Why is that? What's the reason for that? Because if you look at our expansion, you're going to have 4x is going to go into this place here. That number is going to go into this place here. right? And if you continue, it will be 4x cubed, 4x to the power of 4, 4 to the power of 5, and so on. right? So this expansion is only valid if 4x is something so small that as you square it and cube it and make it bigger and bigger, it makes all these terms become really small. Okay, so you're not really adding much to the value of this. Otherwise, if you just stop here, if 4x is worth something big, like, for example, supposing 4x is equal to, for example, something like 5, 
that will be you multiplying this term by five. You're multiplying, you're adding then some 25 to it and then 125 to it. So you keep adding bigger and bigger and bigger numbers. And this expansion will never, ever end. It's going to continue on forever. It's not one of those, when you have a positive integer, you'll end up with a zero somewhere when you do n times n minus one times n minus two. In this case, when you have a fraction, it's going to miss the zero. It's going to continue on forever. If you can keep, you can keep expanding it forever, right? So if this value here is more than one, one or even one or more than one, then it's going to make these terms become really big when you add them together. But if it's less than one, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. For example, if you take a half and you square it, you get a quarter. If you cube it, you get an eighth. If you raise it to the power of 10, you get one over one, one, one over 1024. You know, a really small number. Okay, so um, you're adding numbers which, which basically don't affect the value of the expansion. Therefore, you can say that, that expansion will be true up to, you know, wherever you want to write it. It'll be slight, it'll be a good estimation. So as long as the, the thing that goes into this place here, its magnitude is less than one, then the, the expansion is valid. So we can say that this is a valid expansion when the modulus of 4x is less than one, which means that the modulus of x is less than a quarter, which means that the values of x between negative a quarter and positive a quarter. If x is between those values, then this expansion is valid, okay? And for the other one, you have one plus one minus x, one minus x to the power of negative a half. Now this is valid for when the modulus of x is less than one, okay? Which means between x is minus one to, to one. So we've got to combine these two together, all right? Now we can see that this is the common between them, because if you go from minus one to one, supposing this is zero, this is minus one and this is one. So we're saying it's valid between those values there. That's the, that's this this one. And the other one is valid between minus a quarter and one quarter. Between those values there. So you can see what's common is just this part here. So this is what's common. So we can say as the expansion is only valid for the modulus of x being less than a quarter, therefore x equals a half isn't, okay, um, should not be used, should not be used, okay, something like that, because it won't give us a, a pro it won't give us a, a proper approximation, okay, so then part c says substitute x equals 1 over 11 into this expression here to f obtain an approximation to root 6. So let's start with um, the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x. We put x equals 11 into this, or 1 over 11 into this. Okay, x equals 1 over 11. We'll put it into this uh, expression here. So x equals 1 over 11. If we do this, we're going to have the square root of 1 plus 4 over 11 divided by 1 minus 1 over 11, because 4 times 1 over 11 is 4 over 11. So this is going to give me 11 over 11 plus 4 11, that's going to be the square root of 15 over 11, 15 over 11 divided by 1 minus 1 over 11, which is 10 over 11. Okay, so we have 15 over 11 divided by 10 over 11. So if you work out that, and that's going to give us um, the square root of that will be 15 over 11 times 11 over 10. So it's 15 over 10. Okay, the square root of 15 over 10, which we can say is, if we, if we uh, see that 5 goes to the other, it's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. So let me just simplify this. The square root of 3 over 2 is the same as the square root of 3 over the square root of 2. Rationalizing the denominator will give me the square root of 6 over 2. Okay, so we can say that, therefore, the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x is equal to the square root of 6 over 2 when x equals 1 over 11. Right now, what we can therefore say, all right, how can we use this to do our approximation? Now, because we have root 6 over, over 2, okay, so I can say this is equal to root 6 over 2 when x equals 1 over 11. So I can say that when x equals, when x equals 1 over 11... 
We can say, therefore, root 6 over 2 is going to be equal to, and then we can replace the x in here with, with 1 over 11. So we have 1 plus 5 over 2 times 1 over 11, and we're going to have plus, or minus, sorry, 5 over 8 times 1 over 11 squared. Minus 5 over 8 times 1 over 11 squared. Okay, so this, if I, if I add these together, that will be the same as root 6 over 2. So let me just do that quickly. Let me let me add these together. That gives me 1 plus, and that's going to be 5 over 22. Okay, and that's going to be minus, I'll just put this in my calculator. Um, that's going to be 5 over 8. multiplied by 1 over 11 in brackets and then that part is squared okay so that will give me 1183 over 968 so therefore we can say the square root of 6 is equal to 2 times this answer so we're going to get this answer here and we're going to multiply by 2 okay so we end up with the square the, we're going to end up with root 6 is equal to uh, 1183 one, 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 over 464. Four. Is that right? 464? 484, four, sorry. 484. Four. Okay, so that is the square root of 6. Um, that's the square root of 6 over, uh, well, we multiplied by 2, sorry. That's the square root of 6. Now, we want to write our answer to. Oh, as a fraction in simplest form. Okay, so there's the answer. That's the answer, 1183 over 484. So that is the value of the root 6, okay, uh, given uh, using this approximation. Now, if we want to find out how accurate we are, in case we made a mistake, if it's way out, then of course there's something wrong. What I can do is I can find out the value of this. So I'll press SD. That gives me 2.444. If I find the square root of 6, That gives me 2.449. So it's kind of close. It's close up to maybe one or two, one, um, one decimal place, two decimal places or one decimal place. Okay? So it's, it is an approximation. It doesn't give us something completely different. Of course, it won't be the same as usual. All right? It won't be the same as, uh, you know, root six because we have stopped somewhere. Okay? We stopped quite soon, actually. Right? So it's not going to be as accurate as root six, of course, but it gives us a good approximation to it. All right, so we could use x equals 1 over 11 because its magnitude is less than a quarter. So we can use it. It's valid for this expansion. And we have the answer here. So I hope that was clear. So some of the important things here is to run, understand why we can't use x equals a half. And the reason being is because the expansion is valid as long as the modulus of x is less than a quarter because that is the most stringent condition from those two. You look at the one that's the narrowest, uh, you know, acceptable values from the two that you've got for you to be able to work out which one will we can use, uh, you know, what's what's the whole thing valid for. Okay, it has to be valid for both of those, not just for one of those. So the area between this is valid for both of those. Okay, so there's the answer to this question. Other questions from this particular paper from June 2018. The A-level paper, the UK paper, can be found in the playlist that will be over, over here. Other questions from the international A-level P4 um, expansion, binomial expansion, can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link, and you can watch a video from the link up here, which will tell you how to use my channel to find what you need efficiently. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.